what if you could plan your whole year's worth or month's worth of curriculum in one sitting? And you can. And believe it or not, it's easier than you think. It just takes the right tools. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. How to use something called Autocrat in combination with the Google platform programs that they have available to you. Both of these are free, so it's something you should definitely utilize, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a kids church leader or director, this video is for you. So without further ado, let's get started. If you don't have a Google account, please make one. So you're going to have to um, create your Google account, and then if you go to the top right corner where these nine dots are combined in the top right hand corner, you'll see all the different free Google programs you can use. Now you're going to need two things today. That's a Google Sheets and a Google Docs template. Now let me show you the template that I made that I utilize. Now I, I can send you this for free, so don't get daunted when you see it. So here is my Google Documents. In the top left, you'll see the little blue document. That's how you'll know. This is the template that I use to plan out um, the lesson packet for the weekend. Now, if you notice, this is all um, color coordinated. So the top page is red, it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple, and then the bonus pink, pinkish bin at the end. Um, this is the template that I use so that all the information is sent to here from my Google numbers document. So this is just the bones, right? This is the bones. And so um, all this work was made not so that you have to stress about it, but let me show you what I do on how I complete all the content for this without jumping back and forth, putting in my center information in twice or my memory verse in four times. Um, I have this set up so that way um, all the information in my numbers form jumps into here. So if you notice these brackets, it's where we do the mapping. So the information will go here once it's been completed. Even for the date, the story title, let me show you. So that is the bones. So let's jump back over here. I'm gonna show you our lesson plan Excel sheet. So if you come over here, this is my Google Drive. And like I said, if, if you go to the nine top dots in your Google account, you'll see it under Drive. Um, now this is a big sheet, as you can tell. Let's go to June, because I, I already finished our lessons for June. Um, in here at the top, you see I have all the column information. It says story title, story focus, month, date, week number, Bible reference, key question, bottom line, the list goes on. Now, um, each one of these rows is for a week in June. So I have June week one up here. That will be its own document. Now, oh, sorry. Week two right here is the Feast of Booth. That will be its own document. Now, in here I have all the titles in relation to where I want it to go on this lesson packet. So the story title, which is the story of the lost sheep, will go right there automatically when I'm done. It'll put in the month, the week number, and the date automatically. The key question, which is there for the whole month, will go in. All this information will be filled out automatically with Autocrat. Now this saves me a lot of copy and paste time. This saves me a lot of headache and, and stressing out like, oh, I, I think I forgot an item. Um, it, it has all the information in here um, ready at hand. So let me show you how I turn this document over here into our weekly lesson. So I have everything in there. Let's make our Autocrat form. Now back down here, I have a column that says blank because sometimes I just need a blank column for in case I forgot something. Um, now the, the, the one thing I have to tell you is if you look right here where it says craft supply four, there is no space in between the number. Now how you write it in the column up here is how it's going to be pulled down over here. And so if you have one little spacing in between it, it can kind of screw it up sometimes, but don't worry about that. So here's my titles and let's go to extensions. Now, um, you're going to want to get the add on for Autocrat. I already have it here, but to do that, you just go get add on and you search for the app. So you'll search 
auto crat crat. And then this guy is going to pop up the yellow auto crat sign. And so if it's not installed, be sure to install it. Um, and then once you've installed it, you might have to refresh and sign back into the Google numbers form, but that's okay. So um, this is how I make my lesson plans from this numbers, Google numbers sheet. So here you go. So you click on extensions, go down to Autocrat, push open. All right, so you can see that I have the past lessons up in here. And so whenever I'm finished with them, like right now, we're currently in the month of May. So I want to keep May. I'm going to delete the job that I had for February. That's really far out. This just ensures that I have a lot of space still in my Google Drive. All right, here we go. Here's Autocrat. They still have the May lessons job that I made from last month. So this is a new month. I'm doing the month of June, so I'm going to do a new job. After the new job, you're going to want to name it. So I'm going to call it June Lessons. Then I'll push Next. Now I need to choose the template. Now the template that I'm using is this one that I created, my little rainbow lesson template. So to do that, I'm going to choose a new one. I could choose something that I used recently. Now I use, I make a different template for VBS. I'll make a different one, um, just depending on the situation. This is my church's template, but I'm gonna give you my snazzy simple one. So I'm gonna pull it from my Google Drive, so I have to hunt it down. Oh look, there it is, right there, revised template, T-I-K. So this is the one that I want. So it's fetching the tags from my template. It's currently selected, right here, revised templates, T-I-K gonna push next. Now it's gonna merge the tabs. And the reason why I need to choose a tab is because if you look at my number sheet down in the bottom left-hand corner, I have a, a tab for every month of the year. So I have January, February, March, April, May, June, and July. So um, we start this even in August, but I need to do June only. So I'm gonna select the June tab. And from there, it's gonna pull all my information over, but oh no, something went wrong. You know what the difference is between this one and that one? I didn't capitalize the first letter. Womp womp. So I either can do two things. I can continue on with this, or I could go and ch change my template to match. I can change my numbers temp uh, titles to match my template titles so you can just match them up like I said if you if you're a loser like me and you have them capitalized in your template but not in your other one it really slows things down but let's jump back in I'll bring you to it once this is done all right real quick I got to show you this one so it says memory verse words for the reason why that's um not popping up. I actually don't have a memory verse words for over here. So I separate the memory verse how I want it to look. I have the words and then the hand motion with it. So where it says memory verse words, I have the words and the actions, the hand motion separate from that. Now I have a fourth column in my template all the way down here just in case there's a fourth word and I don't I don't have the space for it. So what I do over here is I have a column in this uh, Google Numbers form where it just says blank. So if I come across this where it's, I need memory verse actions for to show up, I just have it pull from the blank column. Um, another thing I have here is allergy alert. I like to put allergies in there just in case, but it's not always needed. So just a quick tip for you. All right, the next step, once you have all these up, it'll tell you if you missed one or not. So I did miss one. Here we go, center three title. Okay, once everything's completed in this top corner of the Autocrat uh, window, you'll see that the alert for an unmapped tag is gone. And so once that's gone, you'll want to push next. For file name, what I do is I push June week, and then I do my brackets again week number and I believe 
I have to, do I have to capitalize this? I don't think this time I do. Week blank. And so it's gonna come in different files for each week. It'll be exported as a Google Doc. Now you could do PDF, but I do Google Docs because I like to add photos later on. You push, I want to choose which one it'll, what folder it'll go to. So let me choose a folder. I'm going to choose my June folder. This is the one that I want. Now that I've selected my folder, I click next again. Uh, when it says add dynamic folder reference, don't worry about that. Set merge condition, don't worry about that. You can share the document automatically. I don't recommend that because I have to check over everything and make sure it looks good. Um, run on form trigger, no. Run on time trigger, no. And that's it. So you push save. It's gonna save it. Now we're not done yet because we still have to push play to get these to start merging over. So once we push play, it's gonna go into numbers and create our document. So here you go, play. It's gonna be running the job. Now let's see how we did. And here it comes. So it tells you the document, if it was merged, it gives you a URL link. It also gives you a um, hyperlink. You can click to that and see what your document looks like. Let's wait for this to run before we click on any of them. So that's it, it's done. It made us the forms. We can close the autocrat window. Let's click on June week one, shall we? Boom, that looks pretty fresh. We have the story of the lost sheep up there, the correct month, week, and date. Um, it put in all our information in, even the Bible reference. The one thing, you, the, this is why I don't have it share automatically, is sometimes these little things pop up where um, it runs out of space and that runs through, just letting you know the Bible version. I'm gonna delete that because the real estate of that space is what matters the most to me. Now it, it all incorporated here. I have my worship songs in, my center titles. Um, down here I have Theo's item placed down, the Bible story, uh, the memory verse automatically pushed through the craft title, the Bible lesson video title, and the wrap up activity. Now if you scroll down, all my center information is in there. Down here, my Theo things got incorporated. Sometimes this shifts a lot and then it can mess things up. Here's the Bible time. I have notes. Um, I have notes that the teachers are gonna read from the beginner's Bible that day. I will insert a picture here. And to do that, I come over here to insert image, upload from computer. I will find a photo that I want to use. So let's imagine this is a sheep craft. Boom. And so it's in there now. It is too large. So I will make it smaller so that it fits. And then boom. That way the teachers can see what it looks like. Here's the closing activities information. Uh, for the snack time, I want the teachers to know to clean up, have the kids sit in a purple chair, hand sanitizer, pray, and then they can eat. For the show, I have information on how to start the show, if they're having some trouble with the show beginning. Down here, we have the wrap-up activities they can do. Remember, we had nothing down for the memory verse for the fourth section, so I'm just gonna delete that space. We left it blank. Here's our bin notes for anybody that's on staff or cleaning up the room. They know if there's an allergy alert, they have to post up. They are notified what they need to put back into this bin and for anything that needs to stay in class, it can be written there. Um, for the centers, I like to put in um, photos as well. So let's put in one. I have a whole Google Drive folder for all my centers. And the reason why I do this is because I don't like taking photos and uploading them every week, especially if it's for the centers we have in class. Um, year round so what I have is this Heartland centers bin and so for the sheep roundup center I know that we have a little sheep activity and I save the photo and it's down here so I'm going to insert that right there boom and then I can make this smaller I can center it because that will look nicer there we go and I have the script 
for what we want the teachers to talk about with the kids. Down here is another center I need to add a photo. So let's insert an image from our Google Drive again. It's for a train center, play center. So where's my trains at? Here they are. I'm gonna insert that. Too big, so all you do is you size it. There we go, I'm gonna put that in the center. Got the lost trains, lovely. Right here is teacher's choice because it's the summertime. We want the teachers to enjoy having a bit more of a chill and laid back atmosphere. So I have my teacher's choice image and that is in there as well. Now this is quite large. I will probably make a new version of this so that it's not as crazy looking, um, but that is where the images go to. And the coloring sheet, I don't upload anything. We just kind of permanently keep this little crayon guy there. He's pretty cute, so we'll let him stay there. And so other than that, this lesson is ready to go. Now, I don't add any images here for Bible time. Sometimes we'll have a big script there, but we're trying to steer away from doing that because it's a lot of extra work and it's not necessary when you can just read out of a Bible that's already made. Um, so that is how I assemble the lessons in Autocrat. Um, if you notice, that took about five minutes and it not only created one week for us, it created five weeks of lessons. So if you're a teacher and you're trying to implement this for your weekly lessons for your classroom. I did make a version of this for my sister and it basically was just as chunky as this one is because she had to write things like Monday, Monday at table activity, Monday reading assignment, Monday English assignment. So each column had to have the date with the activity. So it, it did take quite a while, but um, if you're a teacher who wants to have your work hours and work time be done during that time, this is a great option for you. It will free you up. And then the beauty of this is you can repeat it all year long. The only thing you might need to switch the following years is maybe just your dates. And that is going to be super nice for you to do. And I think it's totally worth learning and worth your time. So if you want any other information on how to do this, let me know your questions. Thank you so much for watching. And